action. Action! We did Plato's allegory of the shadows of the cave to explore the question, what is truth? What is real? Otherwise known as metaphysics. Let's talk about Plato's mentor, Socrates. Socrates is arguably the, 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 the guy who starts it all. Uh, in, in the Western tradition, Socrates would go and ask some questions and proffer a school of philosophy. Plato would become his protege, and Plato in turn would take on Aristotle as, as his protege. So the first big three are Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle in chronological sequence. A few words about Socrates. It's quite likely that uh, Socrates was illiterate. If not quite likely, there's a lot of there's a lot of discussion that he might have been. He certainly didn't write anything. Uh, it is said that most of what Plato wrote was actually Socrates' spoken word, and Plato is more of Socrates' scribe. Be that as it may, uh, Socrates comes into his fullness as a philosopher after a a very uh, profound moment in his life. He and a friend were journeying to the Oracle at Delphi. And Socrates was known for his wisdom at the time. And Socrates' friend poses a question to the Oracle. And the friend asks the Oracle, is there anyone wiser in Athens than Socrates? And the Oracle responds, there's no man wiser in Athens than Socrates. This would throw Socrates into a sort of a crisis. On the one hand, Socrates can accept what the oracle is, is dictating and hold himself to be the wisest man in Athens, but he's humble and he doesn't feel that he can fill these shoes. On the other hand, not to accept that station and that status would be blasphemous and it would be an insult to the religion that prevailed at the time and certainly to the oracle. So Socrates takes this tension and this conundrum and in this crisis he chooses to undertake a quest and he's going to adopt a peripatetic state and walk the streets of Athens and engage everyone he can find and he's going to ask them some simple questions maybe the questions a child might ask in order to find the wisest man in Athens he's going to try to prove the oracle wrong and he believed that philosophy was not just the domain of folks in the state hall or in academia, although he did go and find folks in those, in those fields. He thought philosophy was for the street, for the equivalent of a coffee shop. So Socrates would go and find anyone who would speak to him, including statesmen and scholars, and he would ask the basic questions. What is truth? What is beauty? What is justice? How do you know what you know? And he used a method called the Socratic method, which we now use today in certain schools as a method of teaching. The Socratic method is a method of simply asking questions and allowing the student to find the student's own way to an answer. It's a lot like, it's, a lo it's much the way a child might engage questions out of sheer curiosity. So Socrates would go and find folks who claimed to be wise, and he would ask them, what is true? What is beauty? Why do you do what you do? How do you know what you know? And he found something, from his perspective, that was quite revealing. He found that not too many people were doing a whole lot of thinking. Not a whole lot of wisdom, or knowledge, or thinking from Socrates' perspective. Most people's first response was, I don't know. I've never thought about it. Other folks had a big long answer, but it was largely plagiarized and it was not their own authentic thinking. And still others did have an answer and they thought it was their own. But with three or four clever questions, Socrates could chop them at the knees and show that there was no foundation underneath their body of thought or wisdom. And he would, like a house of cards, flatten it all out. And he came to a, an illumination that no one really knows what they're talking about. Uh, be very careful of those who claim to be wise. It's very easy to reveal them as not having much going on. And he comes to one or two simple conclusions. One is that a wise man knows that he knows nothing. And two is, know thyself. If there's anything that one can know, 
maybe after a few lifetimes of hard work, it possibly could be to know thyself. Socrates began to acquire and attract disciples who would follow him around, younger folks. And what would happen is Socrates was put on trial by the powers that be. And the, the charge was that Socrates was corrupting the youth of Athens. Those are one of two big charges that were laid upon him. And he was told to drink hemlock and poison himself or recant. He was given that choice. And he chose to drink the hemlock and to poison himself, much to the bereavement of his disciples. That's Socrates. Can I go now? I love my wife. I love our feline. Big thank you.